the IDF attacked Hezbollah from the air and from the land. Hezbollah counts 196 dead and the IDF chief of staff declares this will not end in compromise. I'm Yair Pinto and this is your boots on the ground report on the 132nd day in the Hamas-Israel war. On Wednesday, Hezbollah leader Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah issued a statement in which he reaffirmed Hezbollah's commitment to the terror policy against Israel. The serious escalation on the northern border in recent days is directly related to this speech, especially the principle he articulated that as long as the IDF fights in Gaza against Hamas, Hezbollah will fight against Israel on the northern border. On Wednesday, Hezbollah crossed another line with a barrage of rockets that hit Tzfat. It was launched at 9.04 a.m. from the area of the village of Ramish in southern Lebanon and included 11 grad rockets with a diameter of 122 millimeters. These are serious weapons with the capacity to deliver a large payload of explosives onto a target. Four of them fell in an open area near Natua, one near the parking lot of the Ziv Hospital in Sfat, and another rocket hit the northern command base, killing 20-year-old Staff Sergeant Sara Benjo and wounding eight of her comrades. This barrage came despite recent reports of progress between European countries and Lebanon in negotiations to end the war with Hezbollah. The IDF launched a large counterattack in response to Wednesday's morning barrage, firing artillery shells at Hezbollah positions near the border and striking several Hezbollah positions from the air. The Air Force struck Hezbollah targets in the areas of Jabal el-Barij, Khuna, Dunin, Adshit, and Al-Zuna. The Lebanese El Mayadin network, which is affiliated with Hezbollah, reported that at least 11 people were killed in IDF attacks in towns in the south of the country. As we've come to expect, these reports did not mention how many of those killed were combatants who died with weapons in their hands, but since the IDF was targeting Hezbollah positions, it's safe to assume that those who died were in fact militants of Hezbollah. So far, the IDF has been careful to respond proportionally to the shooting in the northern arena, mainly by attacking the sources of the shooting in various Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon. But senior Israeli officials are warning that this state of affairs would not be allowed to continue indefinitely. If Hezbollah continues to menace the border region and Israeli residents of these northern communities are not able to return to their homes, the IDF will have to take direct action. We will have to compel Hezbollah to move 30 kilometers north to the Litani River as mandated by the UN Security Council Resolution 1701. This is the resolution that ended the Second Lebanon War in 2006, and over the years it has been steadily eroded to the point where it has now completely broken down and is in need of restoration one way or another. Will there be a war on Israel's northern border tomorrow? Probably not. But the status quo is simply not sustainable long term and sooner or later something will have to give. Hezbollah will either move its forces north voluntarily or they will be pushed by the IDF. But this is only part of the story. Hezbollah is a proxy of Iran and right now all of Iran's proxy groups in the Middle East are flourishing and trying to wage war and create chaos in this region. You are part of the force that is pushing back against this evil and barbaric assault on the civilized world. Your prayers help fight this spiritual battle and by sharing these videos on social media and with others, you know who need to know the truth. You're helping us win the media war as well.
This is a very hard war and we need your help. The more people know the truth and the more they use this knowledge to pray into the situation and take action wherever they can, that's how this battle is won. Now, I have a few more things to tell you regarding the IDF's continued battles in the Gaza Strip. Today, the IDF eliminated a field commander in Hamas who ordered the kidnapping of people from the Nova Party on October 7th. In the west of Khan Yunis, the fighters of the commando formation uncovered more tunnel shafts, eliminated several terrorists and continued to find and destroy large quantities of weapons and ammunition that Hamas has stockpiled for their fight against Israel. The battles being fought in Gaza are only one piece of a much larger battle taking place all over the Middle East. But it is vitally important, there is no choice but to continue fighting until Hamas has been decisively defeated and its military leadership is utterly wiped out. Anything less than that is an unacceptable compromise of the vital interests of the State of Israel. With all this going on, and keeping in mind the need to be on guard against a possible escalation in the north, the IDF is preparing a ground campaign into the Palestinian Gazan city of Rafah, the last bastion of Hamas in the Gaza Strip that the IDF has not yet entered. This operation is necessary to complete the mission of destroying Hamas's ability to threaten Israel against the future. If it is not carried out, there is a high likelihood that Israel will have to fight another war with Hamas in a few years, and there will be even more death and suffering. Let me tell you a few things about Rafah and explain why it is so important to the terrorists. The southernmost city in the Gaza Strip currently contains about 1.3 million Palestinians who have been displaced since the fighting began. Before Hamas started this war, about 300,000 people lived in Rafah. In addition, along with the Kerem Shalom crossing, about 178 trucks pass through the Rafah crossing every day into the Gaza Strip. Before the war, about 500 trucks with goods and about 108 trucks entered the Gaza Strip every single day. Even before the war, Rafah was characterized by a high population densely, a high unemployment rate, a housing shortage, and difficulties in water supply. For Hamas, Rafah is important for a few different reasons. To start with, it is the center of smuggling routes in and out of the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. Smuggling of all kinds of things, mostly weapons, drugs, money, but also vehicles and animals flow through this city. A large network of tunnels dug underneath the border is the route for much of this smuggling and Hamas collects taxes on all of it. The geographical location of Rafah makes it the gateway of the Gaza Strip to the world and this gives it a high strategic importance for Hamas. Without control of Rafah, Hamas's oxygen pipe to the outside world, which relies on the smuggling industries, is cut off. The goods that come in as part of the humanitarian aid are received by UNRWA, which as we have learned is heavily infiltrated by Hamas members. In places where the IDF exercises administrative control, especially over border crossings, the IDF is taking responsibility for the civilian people and the mechanisms of the Palestinians instead of Hamas militants. The IDF has begun the process of encouraging the civilian residents of Rafah to move north out of the city to clear the way for the IDF to deal with Hamas. Places are being prepared for these people to move to in the center of the Gaza Strip and 
in the West. But many world governments, including some of Israel's traditional allies, are not happy with this situation. They want Israel to halt the plans to attack the remnants of Hamas, leave this problem unsolved, and hope that it will somehow go away all by itself. UN agencies working in Rafah are also said they will not cooperate with any efforts to move the civilian population out of the city, apparently thinking it's more important for them to stay and be allowed to be used by Hamas as human shields. However, Israel has no intention of allowing Hamas to survive and rebuild itself to attack Israel again in the near future. The plans to move into Rafah and destroy the remaining Hamas military formations that have embedded themselves there are moving forward and the civilian population of the city needs to take the necessary actions to save themselves. The progress towards the decision of the campaign in the Gaza Strip is an important factor in the overall war and it will echo on the northern border. Defeating Hamas militarily in the Rafah area and completing the elimination of all 24 of its battalions will be a clear sign to Hezbollah that Israel is determined to restore security to the northern border as well. On the other hand, if Israel doesn't finish off Hamas, Hezbollah will see that as a sign of Israel's weakening resolve and they might decide that the time to unleash the full power of their massive arsenal of rockets and missiles has come. Nasrallah is playing a game of high-stakes poker with Israel, and Israel must win. But at the moment, Israel's priority is the campaign on the Gaza Strip. That is why it is important to resolve it as quickly as possible, and then deal with the security situation on the border with Lebanon. Before we conclude this report, I want to salute the heroic soldier who fell defending the country of Israel. As I mentioned at the beginning, Staff Sergeant Amar Sara Banjo, 20 years of age, she was part of the Intelligence Collection Unit in the 869th Battalion. She was killed when the Grad rocket struck her base in northern Israel on Wednesday morning. Please join me in prayer for her family, for the IDF soldiers, and continue to pray for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. We need your help by sharing the truth of what is happening in this land so that people can unite with us in prayer and together we will win.